Hey, what's going on everybody? Brandon Charleston here. Quick video, just wanted to demonstrate a full walkthrough as far as being able to use and integrate Gemini 1.5 large language models that have been recently rolled out, especially as a pay-as-you-go type of API. And so with the integration with a platform such as Clay, they haven't quite uh, given the integration as far as being able to select which model. Right now as it sits, it looks like it's just a 1.0, but I'm sure that's gonna change as things roll out. So I'm gonna show you today how to not only get your API key, get it set up as far as billing, but also get it plugged in and rolling um, as far as working with Clay. Uh, I'm gonna also release the uh, template, which will be down in the description below. So you, all, you, all you need to do is just, really just, uh, I'll show you here, but save that as a template within the template, uh, no pun intended, and then you'll be able to use Gemini 1.5 Pro and 1.5 Flash uh, here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and dive in. So if you're not already familiar with Gemini, it is Google's large language model. And so what you wanna do is you're gonna go to ai.google.dev and just get familiar with the large language model. Uh, just like any large language model, there's a lot of options nowadays. Uh, so obviously Google is a big player and so it's worth having in your repertoire or your arsenal as far as uh, clay and automation is concerned. So uh, they do have, we'll just uh, look around here. Let's see here, okay, here's the API. So I wanna show you uh, some of the large language. So now they have uh, Flash and Pro. They're gonna be releasing uh, Ultra, which is their largest model, more powerful. It's kind of like your Claude Opus or your GPT-4.0, right? So there definitely is um, some good opportunities, some good things ahead. So we are gonna, their website's always kind of finicky here. So firstly, you're gonna to wanna to go to Docs, okay? And then you're gonna to want to go to get an API key. And there's a lot of uh, information here and I would say glance over that, just get familiar with it. If it's a lot of uh, things that make you go cross-eyed, you're not alone, it's all good. That's why I'm here to, to help you along the way. So you're gonna to want to get an API key and then it's gonna take you to your aistudio.google.com. Now, uh, if you are gatewayed here or you need to access it, uh, you know, just get your login credentials. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to cover that. But they just recently rolled out the pay-as-you-go pricing. And so, uh, you know, just click on create API key. They're gonna generate that and then you're gonna set up your billing. You're gonna see what plan that you're on. Uh, it used to be free, which the rates, uh, the request limits were like 15 requests per minute, which is definitely trial based. Definitely when use that in production. Uh, but then you're gonna wanna go to your billing, get all that set up and you'll be, you'll be good to go from there. And so if you click on this, you'll definitely want to be more familiar uh, when it comes to what's available, what model to select, and the kind of pricing that you're going to pay, right? Uh, and anything when it comes to AI and usage, if you're using APIs, it's it's token consumption based on input and output. And so, uh, consistently wise, you want to have the input as much cheaper. So you're going to want to give the AI model as much context and parameters and the role and everything that you want, uh, and have control over what your what output that you want. And so because you just don't want to send out a wild goose chase where it's going to give you, you know, just paragraphs of an output because that's just unless that's the information you're looking for, it's just not best use of token consumption and you're going to end up paying for tokens that you don't otherwise want to use, right? So you can see here uh, when you're looking at APIs, you always want to look at the type of RPMs or requests per minute that you can run because with tools like Clay where you have lists each one of those rows is gonna be a request, right? So if the rate limits are low, it's gonna take some time for it to rip through. Otherwise, it's just gonna error out or it's just gonna be queued and uh, nobody's got time for that, right? So uh, you really want to assess the task that you want the LLM to execute. And so that's what this one is uh, as far as Flash is concerned. So in any large language model, typically, at least this is, this is the trend, 
is a lot of uh, companies will be usually release three different models. One's going to be a smaller tier, you're going to have your mid tier, and then your large tier. Usually you're going to want to ask the lower tier, which is a lot faster, to do low level administrative type of tasks. Think of it. If you were to ask like a VA uh, or a five-year-old to do, if you're just trying to understand logic or move one thing to the next or formulate some sort of uh, information, that's usually a lower level, must much more cost-effective way than asking a bigger model, something like a genius professor to analyze something, right? Uh, that's more, or write, write copy, or understand uh, something about a website. That's usually a little bit more creativity and thought that needs to go into it, and so that's where you're gonna want to use the larger models. So, you can see here on Gemini 1.5 Flash, we have a 1,000 requests per minute, uh, and, tokens per minute, I mean, obviously that's a lot. So you can see this is the price. So uh, just be familiar with that. It obviously is really cheap uh, or inexpensive, I should say. Um, and then with that said, you'll go to Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is, this is their mid tier. So the rate per minute is at 360, which is still pretty good. Um, it'll rip through, no problem. But you can see here, input and output as far as tokens uh, and the costings for that. So with that, you're gonna to want to uh, get your API key, and I showed you that earlier, and then go ahead and hop over to Clay. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, for the integration piece, this may obviously come out uh, anytime now, so as of this recording, it's not quite in Clay as far as integration is concerned, but you should still get set up. So you go to Workspace Settings. To, um, I've already punched in Gemini, but just go to Google Gemini Integration, and then punch in your API key, you'll be good to go there. And you can clearly see that if I go to Add Enrichment and I just type in Gemini, we have it right there. And if I double click, it shows that uh, it's using the 1.0 Pro model and then uh, currently there's no uh, selection. So I'm sure it'll be a matter of minutes or time because Clay is really good about it. But being able to select which model that you want to execute on, um, and I'm sure in the short term it's gonna be implemented here. But nonetheless, this is how you manually do it. So with the HTTP API integration, this right here is the keys to the world as far as data is concerned. You can connect anything you can possibly want. And with that, that's why you can use Gemini 1.5. So you're gonna want to, this is an API template. And so I'm gonna put the template in the description below so you can just simply import it into your workspace and then save this. So copy your API key, replace this, and then in the body here, this is called the JSON body, you're gonna want to uh, just put in your prompt as I instruct here, and then it's gonna execute that and then retrieve with a 200 if it's successful. 200's a good thing. Any other number is not so good. Uh, but if it's in the 200s, you're golden. So. Uh, then you're gonna want to uh, just save that current config. That way your API key is always there and you don't have to constantly copy and paste. So essentially you are saving a template within the API, the HTTP API integration here for later use, okay? So we have 1.5 Flash and then we have 1.5 Pro, they're mid-tier. And so you can see here, if I click on it and then I go down, this is just a very, this is a sample. Um, so there's not a whole lot of data here, but as you go in, you, this is gonna be the prompt, right? So this is gonna be the response, I should say. So I put, I just showed that this is actually a successful from my end to make sure it's working. Uh, but whatever your prompt is gonna be, it's gonna feed that to that API call. This is gonna be the response. So you can add this to the uh, to the table as a column um, or just, you know, basically interpolate or append the data however you wish to do that. So, uh, so yeah, I'll have this uh, description in the description below. And uh, this is how you use G uh, Gemini 1.5, at least manually until, uh, you know, Clay decides to integrate it. Uh, but hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot uh, going on when it comes to AI. And I'm going to post uh, another video when it comes to how to just even internalize 
there's clearly a lot of information coming through a fire hose with use of AI and AI agents. And so I do have another video because I just started using AI agents a lot more in my agency as far as automation and execution of web scraping, be able to understand uh, through clients and things like that as far as scoring and vetting and things, things like that. So I will post another video on that, so stay tuned. Uh, but I really appreciate your time. Uh, please like and subscribe. This is helpful to you. and. Uh, We'll talk soon. Have a good one.